Hello, Michael here from Small Robot Studio with another Blender tutorial. Today we're going to be having a look at how to create topographical slices in any mesh in Blender. So I'm going to show you how to do something that looks a little bit like a little land map because that's probably what a lot of you are trying to do. And then I'll show you a couple of other rendering things that you can do as well if you're looking to apply this technique to other th meshes. So the first thing we're going to do is start out by adding in a plane. And we'll just keep that at its default size. And then we are going to go into edit mode and we will just subdivide that. Um, let's say 20 is probably fine. Jump back out of edit mode. Next thing we want to do is create a texture that we're going to use to apply some displacement to this. So we're just going to go into the texture palette here and we'll create a new texture and we'll make this distorted noise. And we'll leave that as the default for the moment. And then we're going to go into the modifiers panel for our plane and we're going to add in a displace and we're going to displace based on our texture that we just created so you see there that is going to be based on this texture here so we can edit the texture to change the way it's displacing um, and you can change your uh, noise type to anything that you wish you can increase the amount or decrease the amount of noise i'm going to use something around 0.1 and then we can adjust the size to make it more fine or small. We'll pretend this is sort of a little mountain range so we'll go with something like that. We can use clamp to get rid of these flat spots if you're seeing them as um, either um, plateaus like this or in the bottom sort of the opposite effect and you can adjust obviously this with the brightness. So if you want these plateaus at the top just increase your bright brightness. If you want the flat spots at the bottom you can decrease your brightness. If you don't want either you can just remove the clamp and you'll see it goes um, all the way down to the bottom and all the way up to the top. Then if I increase my brightness to 2.0 it will pretty much bring us to the world zero on the z-axis. Um, however I'm just going to move that up slightly so it's above the ground plane. If you're happy with your displacement um, you can go back into your modifier and then you can just apply that displacement and I'm going to do that and then I'm going to go ahead and create a subdivision and just increase that so it's nice and smooth. So three subdivision level should be fine for this. So I'm just going to apply that as well. Next, we're going to create another plane and that's just going to be on the floor there. So this will make it easy for us if this one's above it, floating above it. So we're going to go into the modifier for the new plane and we'll just call this the cutter. It doesn't have to be called anything in specific, but just so I can find it easily. And we'll just add a modifier array and then we're going to go to uh, remove relative offset and we just have a constant offset and then we're going to change the z value to say 0.1 and then just increase the count so you can decide how many slices you want each one of these slices is going to be a ring it might be easier to see if you're looking at it with the wireframe and if you want to have more you just have to decrease the uh, offset say to 0.05 and then you could double that to 30 and then you get more slices through your terrain. So this is our terrain. What I'm going to do here is duplicate this with Control D and I'm going to turn off the visibility for the, pl the original plane and then for the duplicated one I'm going to add a boolean modifier. I'm going to set this to fast because you don't need to have it on exact. It doesn't have to be that fine. And we're going to use the object eyedropper and just select our cutter. Then if we turn off the visibility of our cutter, you'll see that you get this nice effect here. Now, if you are having an issue where you're getting unusual results, it's likely because your plane that you're using to cut is slightly too big so I'll increase the size there and then I'll just hide that again and you can see that you get this weird artifacting if the planes aren't the exact same um, dimensions as each other this can occur you could also just make it smaller so if you decrease your size you will get that however um, the problem with that is that you will get the outside bounds as well so it is best if possible to use planes that are the same dimensions we can also clean up some of these lines that you may or may not want um, easily after we apply this. So we'll go ahead and apply that now. So you'll see once you've applied this, you'll get these as flat individual planes. You can get rid of the ones that you don't want if we jump into edit mode. 
and we'll just go select by faces and you can turn this to wireframe to make it a little bit easier to see and if you don't want any specific faces like these small ones here for example I can delete those if you wanted to clean up some of the edges you could go through and select um, vertices and delete those as well if you want just like that so if you're happy with what you've got there you can just sort of preview it with the wireframe we will now convert this into curves so by selecting it and going to object and then to convert to curves and you'll see you get your curves and then at this point we can make this more easily renderable by going into the curve options and changing the first thing we're going to do is change the render u to be 12 this is just going to give us better resolution on the render so we'll change our extrusion to 0.01 and then we can get a nice round wire because at the moment these are just sort of flat um, ribbons by changing the depth and we'll just change that to uh, about five times your extrusion will give you a pretty round effect so 0 0.005 and there you go currently this is only curves but we can still go ahead and render this if we assign a shader to it so we'll just pop a light into the scene we'll give our wires a shader and then i'll just change the viewport and set my renderer to cycles i'm also going to turn my world lighting strength down now if you're using this for some sort of vfx style sort of sci-fi map i suppose you could uh, change it to have a mission so we can make it a nice you know neon green color and if you want it to be like a hologram then it's just sort of a matter of adjusting the alpha so it's transparent we'll add some more geometry so it's a little bit easier to see so you get, there you go, that is a pretty pretty simple effect to set up. Now I'm going to switch over to the skull that I did in the preview for the start of the tutorial and I'll show you how I set the colors up for that. And hey, make sure you're subscribed with notifications on, otherwise you may be missing out on the many tutorials that we're releasing for free each week here on YouTube. So something I'll point out as well, with watertight meshes like this skull, which is to say that there are no internal faces apparent, so you can't, there's not a hole where you can see sort of through to the inside faces of any part of this mesh. Um, you can have your planes that you're using to cut larger than your mesh and that's going to work fine. Still using the same thing where you're using the, the boolean modifier for intersect and that works absolutely fine where you can just still use an array but you can have the planes larger than your mesh that you're slicing. So you can see I just keyed in some very quick lighting there and I'll show you how I set it up from scratch. So you already know how I've done this wireframe and that was just with a skull mesh that I had which will be included for patrons this month. And what we want to do is begin by assigning a ramp to our skull. So we'll just add a color ramp and this is again attached to our emission and the color can be anything you want I chose a lovely green to a lovely pink and currently I've got the emission strength set to one I also put a little bit of specularity on it so just so when it was lighting up it would illuminate the wires that weren't emitting any color now we want that color ramp to have a direction in world space so we're going to add a gradient texture node and we'll assign that to the color to the factor input of our color ramp then we need to tell it which way to go so we're going to add in a mapping node assign the vector out from the mapping into the vector m of the gradient texture and then finally we just need texture coordinates and we'll just use generated output and assign that to the vector input of our mapping so if we run that now you'll see that we get the colors going from left to right we can change the direction they're going with the y value on the rotation so we could rotate that by 90 degrees and you get them going that way you could also make the color ramp go from back to front by again adjusting the x this time by 90 degrees and you'll see it does that we're just going to go top to bottom though for this example at this point you can just use your color ramp to define the colors you can add more colors in if you wish and how i got the animating emission was by using a, another color ramp and this was just set from white to black 
we'll just take the gradient texture out from this node and plug it into the factor of this color ramp and I'm going to add in a math node and set it to multiply run the color into the value the first value input and then the value output into the emission strength and then if I rotate those ramp inputs around uh, just between the values of 0 and 1 we're able to control where the light is being emitted from most and if you're finding that's too dim that's why I've got a multiply in here we can multiply that by a value of 10 and we get a very bright result that way and you can see because I've got the specularity on the material it's illuminating the areas that aren't currently emitting light which is just a little bit of vis dev to help that be visible before it's actually lit up with the em emitter and if you're in a keyframe it the same way you can just go to your first keyframe right click on your position insert keyframe and then go to the keyframe that you want to end it up at move the input that you want to the position that you want right click on position insert keyframe so now you get that animation and the camera animation is done in the same way um, just and adjust keyframing the position of the camera that's it for this tutorial if you found it useful make sure you leave a like so other people can find it and if you haven't already make sure you subscribe as we're bringing out cg and illustration tutorials every week just like this one become a patron and access tutorial assets bonus content a private discord and more by clicking the link below